I'm Pat Keown, a senior research analyst with Thomson Reuters Lipper, and I'm here to speak to you about the fund flows activity for the weekend of Wednesday, August 9th. Let's start by taking a quick look at the market activity for the week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 0.15%, while the S&P 500 Index retreated 0.14%. It was also a mixed week in news impacting the markets uh, this week. Uh, economic news was pretty good. Government news, not so much. Uh, economic data released uh, showed that uh, a strengthening U.S. economy and jobs market was, was going to enable the Fed to start unwinding their bond positions that they accumulated during the, the quantitative easing program fairly soon. Also, uh, the Fed indicated that due to the continued weak economic data, there's a good chance that we won't see any more interest rate, interest rate hikes this year. Another, another bonus for the stock market there. While on the government front, uh, the, the saber rattling between President Trump and the North Korean regime about nuclear war uh, created additional uncertainty in the markets uh, beyond what the Trump administration already had. And as well as uh, another negative for the markets, more uncertainty, was the, the announcement that special counsel Robert Mueller had impaneled a grand jury to uh, continue the investigation into this, uh, uh, the Russian uh, presidential election uh, meddling. Uh, so, on that negative news, let's switch back to the fund flows activity now. We'll start by taking a look at our fund macro groups. Uh, equity mutual funds saw outflows of $4.5 billion last week. Taxable bond funds took in $1.9 billion in net new money. Muni bond funds had positive flows of $471 million, while money market funds took in a whopping $30.9 billion in net new money. Okay, let's transfer it. Let's uh, switch gears a little bit. We'll take deeper dives in, in, into each of these fund macro groups, starting off with the equity fund group. Equity mutual funds, as we said, $4.5 billion in net outflows last week. This marked their seventh straight week of outflows. As usual, domestic equity funds dominated the net outflows, accounting for all, for all of them this week as they saw $5 billion leave their coffers. Non-domestic equity funds took in $541 million in net new money. For the year to date, the equity fund group has seen outflows of $42 billion. All these attributed to, to domestic equity funds. They've had outflows of over $71 billion, while non-domestic equity funds have taken in about $29 billion. Uh, moving on now, we'll look at the equity ETF group. Uh, we saw net inflows here this week. Uh, the group took in $1.7 in net new money, the third straight week of inflows. For the year to date, this group is up $163 billion. A uh, little bit of a reversal from what we saw on the mutual fund side as both the non-domestic equity uh, ETFs and domestic equity ETFs experienced net inflows. Non-domestic took in $1 billion and domestic about $700 million. Going down to the individual ETF level, we see the uh, Industrial Select Sector Spider ETF with net inflows of 1.1 billion, and the Spider Dow Jones Industrial Average, aver excuse me, Average Product took in 926 million. Uh, on the sell side, we see the Consumer Staples Select Sector Spider with outflows of about 805 million dollars. Moving on now, let's take a look at our taxable bond group, starting with the mutual funds. Net inflows here as well. The group took in $1.9 billion last week. Uh, this gives them roughly $120 billion in net inflows for the year to date, which puts them on pace for the largest annual net inflow since 2012, when they took in roughly $257 billion in net new money. In this week's activity, the big players again, uh, core plus bond funds, net inflows of $771 million, and multi-sector income funds took in $250 million. $8 million in net new money. Moving on to the taxable bond ETF group now, saw inflows here as well. Uh, $1.4 billion last week, their fifth straight week of net inflows. For the year to date, this group is up roughly $73 billion. Uh, drilling down to the individual ETF level, we see the iShares iBox investment grade corporate product with net inflows of just about $460 million. The iShares Core U.S. Ag product took in just, a, just around $418 million. And the largest outflow belonged to the iShares 20-plus year treasure, treasury product, which saw about $550 million leave their coffers. Moving on now, we'll switch over to the Municipal Bond Fund Group. Uh, inflows here as well last week. Uh, the group took in $471 million in net new money. Fourth straight week of inflows, pushing their year-to-date uh, 
annual net inflow to just short of $13 billion. Major players here again this week were the High Yield Muni Debt Fund Group and the General Muni Debt Fund Group, which had net inflows of $142 million and $115 million, respectively. Moving on to our last group now, money market funds. Money market funds are prospering from all the uncertainty in the markets as investors take money out of play and put it on the sidelines until, until things settle down. The $30.9 billion in net inflows we saw this week was the largest in uh, roughly a little bit over three years since the fourth quarter of 2013 uh, where, when they had a net inflow of just over $43 billion one week. Uh, the big players this week were in, was institutional U.S. government money markets and institutional U.S. money markets, which had net inflows of $13.4 billion and $7.9 billion, respectively. Well, that wraps up this week's report. Uh, please, take, please join us at our website if you'd like to take a closer look at the data for yourself. It's www.lipperusfundflows.com. And please join us here again next week where another one of our analysts will review that week's fund flows data. Thank you.